Shalom. Today we're going to talk about baptism. We get many letters from many of you Israelites that ask, do we do water baptism? Uh, no. No, we don't. We're going to give you the scriptures on that too. Uh, let's start with Matthew 3. I'm going to show you. Number one, the baptism, and you know what? A lot of you uh, push that water baptism. It's not because you understand the Bible saying it. It's because you're, you're following your Christian church. I'm going to tell you straight. It's because you're, following, you're stuck on Christianity. And I'm going to prove it to you right now. Matthew 3. We want verse 4 to 6. Because the baptism that you're talking to, is it what John did? Let's read this. Matthew chapter 3, verse 4. And the same John has his raiment of camel's hair and leathern girdle about his loin, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Watch this. Then went out to him in Jerusalem and all Judea and all regions round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. What were they doing? Confessing their sins. I grew up in your lousy Christian church, baptized and all that. We never confessed our sins. Not once. Went in the water and idolater rose up in idolater. Some brothers in a damn choir, you went in the, went in the water, a homosexual, you came up a homosexual. You, you black women that worship, you're 300 pounds, you eat and eat, got glaucoma, you went in the water a sinner, you came out the water a sinner. So you never, ever followed the example of baptism in the Bible. Read that again. And were baptized of him in Jordan confessing their sins. You never confessed your sins, okay? What verse is that? Verse 6. That was 6? Yeah. Now, what is sin? What is sin? Let's go at 1 John. 1 John 3 and 4. Thank you. Confess your sins. Watch this. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is a transgression of the law. So in order to confess your sin, you got to know the law. So what is sin? Breaking the commandments. Transgressing the law. What law? You have never studied the law to confess your sins. You don't know the law. From there, Romans 7 and 7. Watch this. Paul gave us all a clue to understanding this. Romans chapter 7 verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Is the law sin? Is it wicked? God forbid. The answer is no. Nay. I had not known sin. I would never understand what sin is. But by the law. But by the law. Come on. For I had not known lust. Paul said, I would have never understood lust. Except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. The law teaches you the commandments of God. The law teaches you. Now when you study the law, you know what you're guilty of. Once you do that, then you were you able to go to John and be baptized because you know what you're guilty of. You can't say, just say the sinner's prayer. Oh, Lord, forgive me my sin. Dip me in some water. That's foolish white man crap. I'm going to tell you straight. From there, go to John, I mean Proverbs 28 verse 13. Proverbs 28 verse 13. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13. Because remember when the people got baptized, they confessed their sins. Right. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. Meaning, whosoever makes excuses for his sins, no blessings upon you. Come on. But whoso confesseth, hear that word, whoso confesseth, and forsaketh and them, and forsake that sin, shall have mercy. There you go. That's how you're going to get mercy. We all want mercy. So what must we do? Confess our sin. We got to know what sin is, know what sins we're guilty of breaking. Confess it to the Lord of heaven and earth. From there, let's go to John 3 and 30. I'm going to show you something about John's, uh, his ministry of water baptism. Was it an always thing? Watch this. John chapter 3, verse 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. John the Baptist said, he, meaning Christ, must increase, but I must decrease. Meaning John's ministry was coming to a close. Christ was taking over the reins, okay? From there, let's go to um, John 4, 1 and 2. John chapter 4, verse 1. Let's see if Jesus Christ baptized anybody. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not. Though Jesus himself what? Baptized not. Christ never baptized nobody in water. Let me say it again in case I studied. Christ never baptized anybody in water. But his disciples. His disciples did though. What verse was that? Um, verse that was two. two? Yeah. From there. Let's go to um, John 15 and 3. Why didn't Christ ever baptize anybody in water? 
Christ got baptized by John, but why didn't he do it? What did John say? I must decrease, but he, meaning Christ, he must increase. John 15 and 3. John chapter 15 verse 3. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. I thought water, throwing, dipping me in water makes me clean. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Christ said, now are you clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Get Ephesians 5, 26. How are we clean with the, with the word? Huh? What does the word do? Watch this. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. That he may sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. By the washing of the water by the word. What is the water we're to be dipped in? The word of God. We got to be immersed in this. That cleans our minds. That cleans our souls, brothers and sisters. Okay, watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Did Moses baptize? Let's see. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 2. Verse 2. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So did Moses take people and dip them in water? I challenge you. Search throughout Exodus to Deuteronomy. Moses was not dipping people in water. So what does that mean? Read it again. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. He taught them the law. Moses taught Israel the law. That's the true baptism. Okay? From there, let's go to 1 Peter 3.21. But the water, brother, but the, just dip me, my brother. <laughs> dip me. Throw some water on me. Just throw. Ah! You are simple as hell. 1 Peter 3.21. Read that slow. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21. The like figure were unto even baptize, baptism that also now save us. So baptism does save us. Now all the water baptized. Ah, oh, you see there? Praise the Lord. Let's give it some water, brother. Give it some water. Read it again. The light figure were unto even baptism doth also now save us. Come on. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. Stop. What puts away the filth off my flesh? Water. Water takes the filth away from my flesh. So that's not the baptism that saves. Read it again from the top. The light figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. Baptism saves us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. Not the water baptism. But the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But the, what gives us a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ? The law. The law. If you are an adulterer and you come before the Lord, do you have a good conscience? No. If you are a homosexual and you come before the Lord, do you have a good conscience? No. What gives you a good conscience? When you confess and forsake your sin, now you got a good conscience. I forsook that sin, Lord. I forsook it. The most high now, you get that blessing. Let's read that whole verse again. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God. So the baptism that saves us is obedience to the word. That's why, like Christ, we're going to teach y'all a word. You're going to get your spirits washed by the word of God. Okay, from there. Last scripture, Jeremiah 2, 22. Okay? Jeremiah 2, 22. This water stuff is going crazy. Our people going crazy. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 22. For though thou wash thee with nitre, though thou wash thee with nitre, and take thee much soap, and take thee much soap, water and soap, yet thine iniquity is marked before me. Yet your iniquity is still marked before So the water don't do nothing. The water was always symbolic. That's it. It symbolized the death of the old man, the resurrection of the new man. That's all it symbolized, okay? I hope you'll understand that. With that, we say shalom.